Hey guys, well, I got a little test rig set up here and I want to show you a few things about alternators. The motor I'm using here is just a three quarter horse induction motor and it's attached to this alternator here. This motor here is just for demonstration purposes. That's all it is. It's just think of this as being a gasoline side pulley engine running this alternator. Unfortunately, this motor doesn't have the power to get the full potential out of this alternator. So really you need a, a gasoline engine and you need a lot higher RPMs, but there's tons of videos on YouTube with people uh, using uh, this type of setup here uh, with, a, with an engine and an alternator. And what they're doing is, is they're either using it as an arc welder, they're using it as a generator. Um, and of course, some of my videos with the 120 volt outputs and, and stuff like that. So there's a lot of things you can do. What I wanna show you about alternators is that you don't have to have a battery to actually make them work. So now I'm showing this older alternator here. I have a lot of alternators, ones with built-in regulators, one without, and this one was just laying around and it had a V-belt pulley, so it's, it's good for that. And it doesn't have the built-in regulator. So now, unfortunately with an alternator with a built-in regulator, you're gonna have to do a modification and I'm gonna make a video. So now this alternator does not have a built-in regulator. So what you can do is you can connect it up so that it'll work without a battery. So I'll talk about the connections on this alternator. This one here is the main connection. This would go to the battery. So this wire here is marked with an F. Now that one's field is where your regulator would connect. Okay, so right now I have my wire here from the field and I have a wire right off of the output terminal. So the, the 12 volt output. And all I have to do is connect this positive output wire of the from the alternator right to the field wire. And so after I've connected the wires together, what's going to happen is, is inside the alternator, the rotor's going to have a little bit of magnetism left on it, residual magnetism. And so once it starts spinning, it's going to create a small voltage. So the voltage is going to come out of the output terminal here, and then it's going to go into the rotor again. And then we're going to have that self-energizing effect. Okay, so I have the wires here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on without them connected. And I'm just going to show you and let you hear what it sounds like. Okay, so there we go. So we'll check the output voltage right now where it's not connected. So almost 600 millivolts is just being created from the residual magnetism inside right now. Just, just from that small bit of magnetism that's left over on the rotor. Okay, so I'm going to connect these two now. And so basically we're going from the bat terminal right to the field terminal direct. And once I turn it on, listen to the alternator. Okay, so if you notice that that RPM drop there where it, it actually dropped down, you can hear it's whining now. And if you look up here, I have a 100 watt bulb and it's just glowing slightly. So I'll turn it on again and then watch the bulb. So you see that delay takes takes a, about a, a couple milliseconds and then it starts kicking in. And what I have here is I also have a receptacle hooked up to the output of the alternator. So I have one wire here, this would be to the hot side of the plug, and then another wire here that's to the neutral side. And I plugged in a drill and I'm gonna turn on the drill and this is a AC drill but because this is a universal motor in here, it'll work on DC as well. They don't tell you that, but it will. So, but not everything does though. You have to make sure that it's a, it's a universal motor with brushes. So try the drill again. That's better. I have the, um, the belt a little tighter, so it's working a lot better. So check our output voltage, 40 volts almost. And I'll turn on the light. So there's the light, that's just a 100 watt uh, incandescent bulb, but we're only getting 40 volts out of the alternator, so. Okay, so I'm gonna shut this down. And I'm gonna show you something. Instead of hooking it up like this, um, there is actually a better way of doing this so that it, it works 
more efficiently is I'm going to disconnect this here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a resistor in here and my resistor is just these heating elements here and I'm going to show you the difference with the, the resistor in there compared to directly connecting it. So now you can hear that it's not quite as, as bogged down. Thread the bulb in. And it seems to be working basically the same as it was before. But now I'm going to try the drill. So it, it seems to work the same. So I'm going to show you the other way of doing this without self-energizing. Uh, because it may not work with all, all, all these alternators without the built-in regulators. Uh, so... What I've done here, I'll just show you what they're doing, is basically I have a battery charger over there. So let's say this is a battery. And what I've done is I've connected it to this rheostat here. And you can see here that it's basically a variable resistor. And then it hooks to the wire on the field of the alternator. Turn it on again. And so now there's nothing going on. The alternator's not on. So I'm gonna turn on the rheostat. And there you go. You can see now, if I crank up the rheostat, it gets a little brighter. But it doesn't bog the alternator down. So I've got the rheostat all the way down, and I'll check the, the voltage. It's 23 volts. So you can see that it works a lot differently than when it's self-energized. It's a lot more manageable uh, when, you, when you actually put the 12 volts in. So I'll crank this up. We'll get the drill. So, it doesn't seem to have as much power, but that's because the voltage from the battery charger going into it is only 11.9 or something. So I'm not sure if all alternators will self-energize. And with this one, this older Delco here, I can show you it working. But uh, I can also show you possibly uh, how this works. As you can see inside this SI alternator here, you'll see there's a condenser here. And basically that's a capacitor. So what's happening is, is the capacitor is charging up. Once the rotor starts spinning, it's charging up the capacitor. And once you get a small voltage, then uh, and you connect it to the field input on, on here, the field wire, then what'll happen is, is the field will then become stronger and then it'll build up enough uh, electromagnetism in the, in the, the alternator to self Energize. So basically, if you want to use this as an arc welder, to a pair of jumper cables to one to the positive and one to the negative, and then I'm going to go over there and see if I can strike an arc with this three quarter horse motor powering it. Uh, but I somewhat doubt that it's going to work. So I'm going to start it up and it's going to be self energized, and we're going to see if we can strike an arc with this three quarter horse motor and alternator. <laughs> So you can basically see what people are doing with the uh, alternator and the little gas engine setup. So they can they can actually take a lawnmower engine and connect it to an alternator and you'll have yourself a arc welder. Also, you can make a small uh, inverter generator or you can make a, um, you can get 120 volts from the output of the alternator like I showed in a, in a video I made a few months ago. So there's a lot of things you can do, but this is just a video on uh, the basics here and uh, hopefully you, you uh, picked up some information and thanks for watching.